that animals that we infected with Zika virus um, in February were re-exposed to Zika virus in May, about 10 weeks later, and the immune response that was elicited to the uh, virus in the first infection was sufficient to completely protect the animals from being reinfected. So this is good news from the perspective of vaccine design because it means that the sort of immunity that's elicited by a natural infection is protective and it also means that people who are in areas where Zika virus is common are unlikely to be reinfected more than once, um, at least for some period of time. Unlike in infection of non-pregnant animals where the infection is resolved in just about a week, week and a half, uh, the pregnant animals had virus that uh, was uh, sustained in the mother's blood for, in some cases, more than, in one case at least, more than two months. Uh, the detection of virus over a prolonged period of time indicates that the fetus is infected and is shedding virus back into the mother's bloodstream. This is a hypothesis that we're currently testing, but if it's true, it suggests perhaps that the severity of uh, in, uh, of, of risk to the fetus is going to be linked to how long the virus can be detected in the mother's bloodstream. We've been able to make all of the data that we've collected available online in real time. And so this has enabled a, a real collaborative, a collaborative spirit with not only our lab, but also other labs that are pursuing similar types of research.